Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In this video, I'll explain another standard programming language that may be used to program PLCs. I'm talking about function block diagrams. We will see that this language can prove to be much simpler and straightforward for engineers or equivalent personnel. However, as it is different than the electrical diagrams that most of the workers can easily understand, it's not as common as ladder diagrams. So, Let's have a look at what are the main elements that are used to implement function block diagrams and later on we will see how we can implement and simulate function block diagrams as well. Function block as the name suggests is a unit of program that performs a specific task. In other words, it is a complete set of instructions that are enough for performing a defined task. So, a single function block may take multiple inputs and may generate multiple outputs depending on the type of the task it is performing. Generally, a function block is represented like this, where inputs are always on the left side and outputs are on the right side. The block in between the inputs and outputs contains the set of instructions that generate the outputs using the given inputs. The block is generally named according to the function it is performing. We will see several examples in a bit to understand the naming of function blocks. A single function block may represent standard logical functions such as AND, OR and many others or they may rep also represent sequence functions as well such as timers, counters, adders, etc. Moreover, a user may define his own function blocks as well that may represent anything like averaging the inputs or any other function. The symbols shown over here are the standard IEC symbols that are used to construct function block diagrams. We can have horizontal and vertical lines that are used to connect function blocks with each other. Then we have function blocks and additionally, and additionally connectors may also be used that are used to connect two distant points in a function block diagram. So all function block diagrams are made up using these elements only. As an example, these blocks represent AND, OR and NOT gates implemented in the function block diagram. Look how the block has been named using this specific symbol. Moreover, implementation of NAND, NOR and XOR or exclusive OR gate is shown over here. Appreciate that how simple function block diagrams can be as compared to ladder diagrams. Let's relate a ladder diagram more concretely and directly with function block diagrams through some examples. As a first example, consider this ladder diagram. You should be able to readily recognize that this ladder diagram is implementing OR operation between input A and input B. So, to implement the same thing using function block diagrams, it's quite simple and straightforward. This is the function block for the OR operation and by assigning input A and input B to the inputs of this block, and output to Q, we can easily implement the OR operation through function block diagram. Similarly, consider this diagram. Note that this ladder diagram is performing AND operation between two inputs, but input I0.1 is normally closed contact. So to implement this thing through function blocks, you just need to AND the two inputs, but the input I0.1 should be inverted first. Therefore, this function block diagram represents the logic implemented by the ladder diagram shown over here. As another example, consider this ladder diagram. If you have watched the previous videos in which we saw how to generate ladder diagrams, you must remember that this ladder diagram is representing a latching operation. That is, if input A and input B both are true, the output will turn on. And now even if input A goes low, the output will still remain on. To turn off the output, input B has to go low. So to implement this thing using function block, you should see that the input A and output Q are being ORed together, whereas the result of this OR operation is being ended with the input B. So the equivalent function block diagram will look like this. You can see that the input A and output Q are being ORed and the result is being ended with the input B to get the output. As the last example, consider this equation that represents exclusive OR gate. Learners should be able to implement this equation through ladder diagrams and function block diagrams as well. Well, for your reference, this function block diagram represents the exclusive OR gate represented by this equation. 
you can see that the first part of the equation is being implemented by first inverting B through a NOT gate and then performing AND operation with A. Whereas the second part is being implemented by inverting A through a NOT gate and performing AND with B. As the last step, the result of AND operations are being passed through an OR gate which is represented by an addition symbol in the equation. So dear learners, this was everything about the function block diagrams that I have to say in this video. In the next video, we will learn how to implement function block diagrams in the software and simulate its working. Up till now, we have used RS Logic software for testing our ladder diagrams. Unfortunately, this software is only designed to program a PLC through ladder diagrams. Therefore, we cannot use it for function block diagrams. Keeping this in view, the next video will introduce another freely available PLC programming software called OpenPLC, which is capable of programming a PLC using any of the five standard PLC languages. Therefore, learners do view the next videos to learn about downloading and installing OpenPLC software and how to use it for ladder diagrams and function block diagrams. That's all for this video. Thank you and take care.